Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Hausdorff Reads the Bible. Today I'm reading Genesis 27. The entirety of today's reading is a section called Isaac Blesses Jacob. Now those of you that are regular listeners uh, or regular readers of the blog will be aware that I typically read um, Christian commentaries uh, in addition to just reading it myself and commenting. And, you know, the purpose of that is to make sure I'm not misrepresenting things or Miss, uh, missing some obvious piece of the story. Uh, I did that today, but I didn't really find anything valuable, even though they had a lot to say, and they were quick to sort of defend the appropriate characters and, um, and so forth. Uh, I, I didn't think there was anything that was really terribly worthy of bringing up. However, as I said, there are. Uh, they did have a lot to say, so if you're interested, it's worth checking out. Uh, and <laughs> before I get going, uh, today's reading is just weird. I don't really know how else to describe it. Uh, there's a few aspects of it that are just totally bizarre that I, I assume has something to do with the ancient culture uh, from which the story came from, uh, but it, it just seems silly to me, so I'll, I'll talk about those when they come up. It's quite possible there's something that we're just missing, uh, but I, I think it, they just... Some of their old ancient superstitions are creeping in and just kind of seem silly. All right, let's go ahead and dig right in. Verse 1. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son. And he answered, Here I am. He said, Behold, I am old. I do not know why... Excuse me. I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow... And go out to the field and hunt, for, uh, and hunt game for me, and prepare for me delicious food, such as I love, and bring it to me so that I may eat, so that my soul may bless you before I die. Okay, so basically Isaac is just, he's old and blind, and he figures he's going to die soon. He wants to bless his son, uh, his favorite son, Esau. And so he calls him in, and he says, I'm going to bless you, but first I want to get, you know, I want you to go do this special hunt for me and cook some food for me the way I like it, and then I will bless you. Which, from you know my naive first reaction, is just, oh, okay, that's nice, I guess. I mean, what does a blessing mean? What does it mean that he's going to bless him? I don't really know. Um, it turns out it's much more significant than our first, uh, first impression might give, as we will discover throughout the story. Um... <clears throat> But something that, uh, that we want to ask ourselves, where exactly does this blessing come from? Is it from Isaac, or is it like from God and Isaac is just directing it? I'm not really sure exactly how it's supposed to work. Um, but again, we'll bring those up as it comes up in the story. Okay, continuing forward, verse 5. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So when Esau went to the field to hunt for game and bring it, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau. Bring me game and prepare for me delicious food that I may eat it and bless you before the Lord before I die. <laughs> Again, the Bible never, is never shy about saying things twice. She couldn't just, it couldn't just say she relayed the story. She has to like repeat a line. Anyway, um, uh, so Rebecca told her favorite son, who happens to be Jacob, uh, what just happened. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice as I command you. Go to the flock and bring me two good young goats, so that I may prepare for them a delicious food for your father, such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father to eat, so that he may bless you before he, die, before he dies. But Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, Behold, my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. <laughs> I don't know why that phrasing makes me laugh. Um, Perhaps my father will feel me, and I shall seem to be mocking him and bring a curse upon myself and not a blessing. His mother said to him, Let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go. Bring them to me. All right, so apparently this blessing is somewhat of a big deal, uh, which I guess makes sense since it's in the Bible at all. Uh, and Rebecca overheard the interaction between Isaac and Esau, and she wants that blessing to go to her favorite Jacob instead of Isaac. And so she tells him, 
to, you know, go get a goat, because, you know, they, they're shepherds, they have flocks, so she's going to have him go get two goats, actually, it says, and she's going to make him food, and then um, she's going to have Jacob take Esau's place and get, and, you know, he's basically going to be stealing the blessing. Uh, and Rebecca definitely seems to be orchestrating this whole thing. Um, Jacob sort of protests and says, you know, well, what if he knows it's me? He might curse me. So he's afraid of being cursed instead of blessed. So apparently Jacob has, or at least potentially has a curse that he could give instead of a blessing. Um, and she says, well, don't worry about it. I'll take the curse, which, so if he does get cursed, is she able to deflect it? Again, a lot of just, uh, you know, questions about how this all works. But anyway, let's move forward. Uh, <clears throat> verse 14. So he went and took them and brought them to his mother. And his mother prepared delicious food, such as his father loved. Then Rebekah took the best garments of Esau, her older son, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And the skins of the young goat she put on his hands and on the smooth parts of his neck. And she put the delicious food and the bread, which she had prepared, into the hand of her son Jacob. Okay. So... He went and got the goats, gave it to his mother to prepare. She makes the food, and then she takes the goat skin and puts it on his hands and his neck because he is a smooth man, <laughs> so he's not hairy. He's relatively hairless, uh, and so that won't do. But apparently, the skin of a goat is the right sort of texture and amount of hair and so forth as his brother. He's... he's uh, Esau is a dead ringer for a goat, apparently, <laughs> or at least his, his hands and neck are. Uh, I mean, just with that, right there, isn't that proof that this is just like an old fable as opposed to um, a documentary? <laughs> I mean, if, you know, if we were reading this and it was like Mother Goose and Grimm, like no problem with this kind of silliness, uh, which... My understanding is actually that was, until relatively recently in the Christian community, that was pretty much the view of these stories. Uh, but of course, my perspective here is from that fundamentalist Christian background where these are supposed to be literal, which is uh, why I'm so interested in harping on these details. <sighs> okay, so anyway, Jacob goes in there with the food and uh, his brother's clothing and the skin of a goat on his fingers, or on his hands, rather. Okay, anyway, moving forward, verse 18. So he went into his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? I would argue already Isaac must suspect that something is up, because he just told his son Esau to go out, and, you know, when, he, when potentially Esau comes back, he's like, Who is it? Like, it seems like he, su he suspects something's up. All right, anyway. Uh, Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Now sit up and eat of my game so that uh, your soul may bless me. All right, so Jacob lies and says he's Esau and asks that his father eat the food so that he can get blessed. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? So again... Uh, Isaac definitely suspects something's up because he's asking questions. He asks him how he did it so fast because um, right, Esau had to go out and actually hunt and so that takes time and then he has to prepare the food and all this junk uh, where Jacob, all he had to do was go out to their flocks. So one step has been removed so clearly he came in faster than you would expect. Oh, but he has an answer for this. Because the Lord your God granted me success. Okay, so he says, well, you know, God made the hunting go way faster than it normally would. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near me, that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are my real son Esau or not. Again, very clearly Isaac knows something's up, or suspects something's up, at the very least. So Jacob near, went near to Isaac his father, who felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, and the hands are the hands of Esau. And he, so, again, <laughs> the goat skin, a dead ringer for Esau. <laughs> And he did not recognize him, because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. He said, Are you really my son Esau? He answered, I am. Then he said, Bring it near me, 
that I may eat of my son's game and bless you. So he brought it near him, and he ate. And he brought him wine, and he drank. Uh, Then his father Isaac said to him, Come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him, and Isaac smelled the smell of the garments and blessed him. Uh, So, (laughs) again, he's... The time was too fast, which, okay, that, that seems like a relatively easy one to explain away. Um, he was suspicious enough that he was, like, feeling his hands and neck and stuff and smelling him, which all um, checked out. But this is the reason I made such, well, actually the reason I made such a big deal of the goat hair is <laughs> because it's so funny. Uh, but it's also relevant because it's not like... You know, oh, well, instead of pure, you know, bare skin, he'll, he'll feel hair and it's fine. And, like, maybe it was something that he just didn't realize. Like, he was suspicious. He was very clearly suspicious. And it worked. And, like, I, that pretty much doesn't make sense as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it might have worked on an unsuspecting Isaac here. but um, And the voice! The voice was wrong. Like, it just... If the blessing is such a big deal, which we'll find out in a minute, it's a huge deal, I don't think at this point, with this level of suspicion, he would have gone forward with it. Okay, anyway. Um, He said, See, the smell of my son is the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may your mother's son bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be everyone who blesses you. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, when Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, Esau, his brother, came in from hunting. So Jacob gets blessed, he leaves immediately, and whew, that was close, because Esau came in right after. Okay, he also prepared delicious food and brought it to his father, and he said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, so that you may bless me. His father Isaac said, Who are you? He answered, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Isaac trembled very violently and said, Who was it that hunted game and brought it to me, and I ate it all before you came? And I blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. Uh, So now he's like, Oh my God, it wasn't you! Even though he clearly knew that something was happening. As soon as Esau heard the words of his father, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and has taken away your blessing. Uh, So that right there is, I mean, a weird story just gets weirder. Why can't he just bless his other son also? It's like... Does each father only have a finite number of blessings? Like, is this a resource that he has divvied up? He's divvied up to the wrong person? Also, apparently, he can't retract it. He can't take the blessing back and give it to the proper son. Uh, So this whole thing is weird. Uh, And, of course, the, um, you know, mythology stuff is all centered around God. So you would expect if Isaac was giving out these blessings, really it's a blessing from God, right? He's just sort of divvying it out or something. Uh... But in that case, you would think God, being all-knowing and everything, would understand that this was a mistake and we could get this sorted out. But no, he was tricked. He gets the blessing. He, you know, he gets these benefits of God that he, his crops will do wonderfully well and, you know, he'll get all this wealth and stuff. I guess God is just now forced to give Jacob all these blessings. It's kind of ridiculous. Like, the whole setup is ridiculous. Um... Not surprising that this kind of thing would come from a culture who believes in magic. It really is surprising that somebody from this day and age can read this and think it's real. Anyway, uh, moving forward. Oh, shoot, where was I? Uh, But he said, Your brother uh, came deceitfully and has taken away your blessing. Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? Uh, And again, well, there's a footnote. But remember, they... The names in a lot of this stuff are, you know, puns and whatnot. And this footnote says, Jacob means he takes by the heel or he cheats. So, um, if you know anybody named Jake, uh, remember that. Okay, anyway. For he has cheated me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. 
Well, let's hold on a sec about that birthright. I remember that story. Uh, and Esau pretty much gave that away. I mean, he traded it for a bowl of soup. So that, <laughs> he's already rewriting his own history. Okay, anyway. Then he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him lord over you and all his brothers. I have given to him for servants. Wait, 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 wait. He gave... So I, I didn't notice this when I read this before. Isaac, part of that blessing was that he gave all of his other brothers to him as servants. I, I, I guess that means Isaac has a bunch of other children as well. But, so he picked his favorite son and then made all of his other, huns, uh, uh, other sons slaves to the favorite son? That is the way this reads to me, and that is really screwed up. Like I said, I didn't notice this earlier, so um, maybe I'm reading something too much into this at the, at the moment. But that sounds really bad. Let, let me just read that verse again, 37. Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him lord over you, and all of his brothers I have given to him for servants. Yeah, that sounds like what that means, right? And with grains and wine I have answered, excuse me, and with grains and wine I have sustained him. What then can I do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. Okay, I get it. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, Away from the fatness of the earth shall your dwelling be, and away from the dew of heaven on high. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you shall break his yoke from your neck. I'm not exactly sure what break his yoke from your neck. I mean, a, a yoke is something you have on like a beast of burden, right? To um, keep them working for you. So he's saying, you know, you're going to work for him for a while until you get restless. And then you're going to break that. I don't know if that has to include killing Jacob or if it just means he's going to break free from him. Uh, why not just say that, oh, actually, clearly that blessing was screwed up and he can't have it anymore. And he can't have his brothers as slaves, I realize. That would have been fine, but no, he just has to go with it. Uh, okay, anyway. Now Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, the days, of mourning are for, the days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I, will kill with brother ja then I will kill my brother Jacob. But the words of Esau, her older son, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau comforts himself about you by planning to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to... Flee to Laban, my brother in Haran, and stay with him a while until your brother's fury turns away. Until your brother's anger turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him, then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereft of both of you in one day? Okay, so basically Esau is so upset by this whole thing and potentially, depending on what that meant, uh, Isaac basically told him to go kill his brother. I'm not sure what, the, what exactly that break his yoke from your neck thing means, but that's potentially what it means. It's certainly what Esau heard. Uh, and then Rebecca's like, uh-oh, Jacob, you better get the hell out of here. At some point, he's going to calm down about this, and then I'll send for you back. But you need to go back to my homeland and, like, wait it out, basically. Um, so... Oops, he got the blessing, but there's definitely a downside to it. Okay, there's one verse left, and honestly, I think it ties up this whole crazy story in a nice little bow. So let's see, verse 46. Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I load my lot... I <sighs> Jesus. <clears throat> let's try that one more time. Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I loathe my life because of the Hittite woman. If Jacob marries one of the Hittite women like these, one of the women of the land, what good will my life be to me? Okay, so Rebecca is sort of doing this like silver lining thing, and she's like, well, I'll never see Jacob again, or I won't see him for a long time, or something. He's sent very far away from me, which sucks, but at least he's going to marry uh, somebody from my hometown instead of marrying these Hittite women, who I hate, and my life would be worthless if both of my sons married Hittites. 
so once again, she is a huge racist. And furthermore, um, I would argue that she engineered this whole situation for the entire purpose of sending her younger favorite son back to her hometown so that, she, so that he doesn't wind up marrying a Hittite woman. And so this entire book is all about race, or this entire story is all about racism. Uh, so let's, she was the driver of all of it. Um, Isaac was going to give his favorite son a blessing. She overheard it. She, you know, um, pushed Jacob into this ridiculous lie to try to get him to get the blessing instead. But what could have possibly happened? Because obviously at some point it was going to be discovered and Esau would know what happened and he's the stronger brother and so forth and it's reasonable that he would have been ready to attack uh, his younger brother. Of course, maybe she didn't realize he was going to try to kill him, but she certainly knew that he was probably going to want to fight him and she could have sent him away so that he could get married to the proper kind of woman. I, and I think that that is the whole reason behind this entire story. And I think it's pretty terrible, actually. Rebecca's a horrible person, which I guess is why they wrote about her in the Bible, because it seems like every character in here has a whole bunch of terrible qualities. Um, so, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's today's reading. Um, I don't know. I... <laughs> I'm still waiting for all that good stuff that I hear about. The Bible is so full of uh, so much good stuff. I'm just not seeing that much. All right. Well, uh, that's the end of uh, that's the end of today's episode. And uh, thank you very much for listening, as always. And I will see you next time.